where they play the rock music. Getting in the swing, you've got to look the king. Anybody can be that guy. The night is young and the music's made. Feel the rhythm of music. Everything is fine here. community it's Mazzy here and I'm just here north of San Francisco in Seattle it is north so hometown blues in this winter time contest entry for Edwin pretty green vinyl guy um, 500 subscriber contest really cool concept simple concept but really cool international five records to ten records or more if you like of course i have an idea to do it in three segments so it's going to be more edwin we never met we almost met but we didn't meet um last july i was in uh, vancouver british columbia to see paul mccartney so edwin and i shared the same space we were in the same room for three hours or four hours depending on when he got there watching uh, paul mccartney uh, he lives, uh, I think, on an island. Is it? Van Do you live in Victoria? I can't remember now. But he's, he, he came into Vancouver. I came up from Seattle, so I drove up there. Anyway, enough of that. Congratulations on that. Showing uh, five different countries. I, again, I split up in three things. Since, Edwin, you're from Ireland originally, I want to show you. I love, this is perfect, because I love um, music from around the world, international music, world music, as they say. Irish, a big part of that. Um, and I did go to Ireland in the late 90s. My, the three of us went, Michelle, my son, and, and we went to a wedding. We stayed in, in um, Dublin for a few days, and the wedding was out in Glendalough. So we had a great time, and I picked up uh, some music there. So uh, they're, they're kind of obvious choices, really. Uh, I didn't get all these in, um, in Ireland, but anyway... The Pogues, instead of just picking one record. The Pogues, in terms of Irish rock and roll and uh, bar music and, you know, you can't not mention the Pogues, at least uh, that's in my case. These are the three I have on vinyl, I have others on CD. This has probably one of the best Christmas songs of all time, If I Should Fall From Grace With God. Um, oh, what's the song? A Fairy Tale of New York. There we go. But um, three Pogues records. Now, you can't really uh, talk about Irish music, really, in the traditional sense without talking to the Chieftains. I've seen the Chieftains twice in person, uh, in San, both three times, or twice in San Francisco. I only have these three on vinyl. I'd like to get more on vinyl. But I have all these on compact discs. Long Black Veil, Tears of Stone... Film cuts, uh, soundtracks, mu music. I think I first got into them. They did um, Barry Lyndon. They worked a lot of the music uh, from the Chieftains was on the Barry Lyndon soundtrack. The best of the Chieftains, of course. Uh, Santiago. This is more of a, uh, a South American uh, renditions of music and Water from the Well. I mean, you could, in a way, I don't want to say they're interchangeable because they have different feels to them. And I, but I just love Patty Maloney is sort of the main um, main guy. But um, I am going to mention, I have a little other section, a little special bonus that I have to do, and that's going to be um, next, and I'll end up with Around the World. We'll go Around the World. So, Chieftains. So I'm doing 5, 5, and 5. And if you multiply that, who knows, because Mazzy can't uh, count. Now, I know you mentioned Christy Moore. I'm a big Christy Moore fan. In fact, in fact I picked as many... Christy Moore CDs as I could when I was in Ireland in the late 90s. Here are some of them. I love his uh, folk music. I know he's very important uh, in the Irish folk scene to this day. Is, did he, is he still alive? I can't really remember. I haven't picked up anything by him probably in at least a decade. This is probably the last one on Sony Music. And this is, um, I don't even know what, what year. 
have a lot of imports of his uh, music, CD Live. This is a great record. Well, they're all really good. And then this I picked up, well, uh, uh, this I picked up locally. But if you're going to talk about Christy Moore, you know, his younger brother's not too shabby. His younger brother changed the name. Kind of like the Paul McCartney, Mike McGear, where the younger brother changes his name not to kind of ride the coattails of his brother. But Luca Bloom made amazing records. And I bought his records when they came out on Warner Brothers in the late 90s, 2000s, I believe. Um, Luca Bloom. Luca Bloom. These are, these are amazing records. In some ways, I enjoy... Was this one um, Turf, but the one that got a lot of play at the time was this one, Acoustic Motorbike. Really a great album. So if I was to pick one, I would probably pick Acoustic Motorbike. Although if you want something a little kind of, um, I don't want to say snarky, but kind of fun in a weird way, on one of these records, he does a hilarious kind of folky Irish version of Dancing Queen. It's on this one. Dancing Queen, obviously the uh, song by ABBA. So there's a Swedish, a Swedish, throw in a little Swedes. Um, and then I'm gonna end up the Irish thing, which, you know, I was gonna do a bunch of Ann Morrison, but come on, I mean, not all of it's, not a lot of it is, is Irish per se, but you can't mention Ir Irish music without seeing, mentioning Van Morrison. And I know Zeke mentioned this as one of his guilty uh, personal favorites, great record. The Chieftains and Man Morrison, Irish Heartbeat. So great, great, great record. Ireland. Um, I'm doing a Ry Cooter, a little insertion here in the middle, and then on the end we'll have five country international artists. The reason I'm doing this is because Ry Cooter has brought a lot of music to my attention and to a lot of people's attention. Now, there's a bit of a debate and argument you can talk about and talk about artists like Paul Simon, George Harrison, about appropriation, about bringing the music from other countries in and, and presenting it as yours. Paul Simon got some flack with um, Graceland, but remember early on he used uh, music from the Andes uh, in Urubamba, in that band, in um, uh, on uh, Simon Garfunkel's uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water album. So he introduces these things. I, when I was young, I bought the Urubamba album on Columbia because 
of that because of Paul Simon. George Harrison, uh, obviously, uh, I got into Indian music and um, Ravi Shankar because of George Harrison from Wonderwall, his soundtrack and other things. So, Ry Cooter has done some collaborations, but first, since I'll just do a little bridge gap, The Chieftains featuring Ry Cooter. Great record, um, San Patricio, and uh, it's a great record in the Latin influence, but it's a cool combination of Ry Cooter and um, The Chieftains, and I don't think this has ever been released on vinyl. If it has, you need to tell me right now and send it to me, VCLT. Go to maslov.com and you can get my address. I'm kidding. It's um, it's, it's not out. I would have known. But in terms of, uh, we all know that if it wasn't for Ry Cooter, we probably, the world would not know of the uh, great collaboration of the Buena Vista Social Club. He plays on it. He produced it. He worked with the vendors on the documentary and brought this amazing music. And all these artists together and individually really kind of, um, just, you know, exploded after this. This was uh, one of those major cultural uh, introductions to great Cuban music. And uh, most of you know this. If you don't know it, this is an album that must, must be in every collection. Buena Vista Social Club, produced by Ry Cooter. Manuel Galban, uh, part of the uh, Buena Vista Social Club in there, great guitar player. And this is a great joint effort on Nonsuch Records. Uh, it was very rare on the vinyl for years, and it came out again about, about a year or two ago. So pick this up. Even if you get the CD, I'm, I'm not snooty about it. But it's almost like Latin surf guitar. Gorgeous record of, of the two of them. And of course, um, look at that tail fin, right? Amazing cover, Nonsuch Records. It's called Mambo Sinuendo. Sinuendo. Great record. And Ry Cooter also uh, worked uh, Talking Timbuktu with Ali Farka Torre. I have a, uh, many, I have about six or seven of his CDs, Ali Farka Torre as well. And this is a great combination they did together. So um, from the uh, World Circuit Records, from the African continent, um, Ali Farka Torre, who uh, died in the last, I don't know, five, eight years, maybe 10 years now, I didn't even, no, but this is a great, great record, too. And then to end up that one, uh, more on the Indian side, a meeting, a meeting by the river. Again, I had this for years on uh, on a CD, and I picked up the vinyl several years ago. It came out, I mean, I'm not even sure when it came out on vinyl. But um, it's an analog production, a meeting by the river, Rai Cooter and VM Bahat. So Indian, sort of raga acoustic. Well, it's a double record in one sleeve. Won't say any more. Ry Cooter brings the world to us as well. One more guy. in San Francisco, north of Seattle, south of Seattle. I'm reversing it. So again, congratulations on through 500 subscribers, uh, Edwin. The last part of this are five separate countries. Again, I, I, overachiever, I want to see if I can get extra credit here. Okay. One of my all-time favorite folk records is June Tabor and Maddie Pryor, the Silly Sisters. You can see this in the bins. This is a copy. It originally didn't come out in America. It was an uh, import, 1975, I think, and I got it right when it came out. We played this in the store, and I fell in love with it. Um, 
Maddie Pryor, you may know, was a singer in Steel Eye Span. Uh, she has a kind of beautiful golden voice, wonderful sweet voice. June Tabor, a little uh, richer, a little lower uh, register, and they just are wonderful together. Several of the uh, tracks on here are a cappella. Ten years later, they made a, another Silly Sisters record under this wacky cover. But get this, it's if you like uh, English folk, traditional English folk music, but really in a wonderful and uh, uh, sort of edgy area, uh, you can't go wrong with this. And musicians are people you might have heard if you follow the British uh, folk scene, uh, this sort of the 70s folk scene. Marty Carthy, Nick Jones, Tony Hall, Andy uh, Irvine, Johnny Moynihan, Gabriel McCohn, Danny Thompson, John Gillespie, and Brian Golby. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful record. This is an all-time uh, grail, or, or not grail, but an all-time favorite of mine. So that's from the British Isles, from, from England. Old England. You know, I can't show international without showing Ravi Shankar. I love Indian music. I love sitar music. I could have picked anyone. I picked this just because of the San Francisco connection. And it has a little psychedelic cover, you know. I don't, Ravi Shankar didn't really love the idea of being um, associated with the whole rock and roll, psychedelic, drug-taking scene. You know, in every movie in the late 60s, when there was a, a, a marijuana scene, they always put Indian music behind it. He wasn't a fan of that. But George Harrison introduced him to the non-classical world. I love um, Ravi Shankar. I love Indian music. I saw him three or four times, uh, obviously concert not a concert for Bangladesh, but the George Harrison 74 tour. I saw him at the um, George Harrison uh, tribute concert at Royal Albert Hall in 20, 2000, 2003, is that when that was? And I saw him on his own at the Civic Auditorium, I believe, in San Francisco in the 70s. So, Ravi Shankar, that's my, uh, one of my picks. India. Let's go to Spain, Paco de Lechia. Paco de Lucia, this is kind of my favorite album of his on Island Records, came out around 75, 76. Really good record. The guitar, the guitar notes just roll off that acoustic guitar. His playing is amazing. A lot of uh, people got into him a little later because of fusion with uh, John McLaughlin and, and um, I forgot who the other guitar, jazzy guitar player. And that's just fine. I like this stuff, which is a little more traditional, but a little more folky. But this record on Island, um, just called Paco, self-titled, is stunning. Mando de Bango, Africa. Um, he had a big hit in the 60s, and I'm blanking on the name of the song. You'll get it. This is a reissue that came out this year. One of my favorite reissues of this year, African Voodoo, voodoo music of Mando de Bango. Has just a great, funky, soul Africana feel to it. So, uh, highly recommended. Earlier on um, my channel, there's like, I think, a two-minute or three-minute uh, clip of a song from this. So, if you want, or you can just, you know, Google it elsewhere. But uh, this is a great sounding record and just, just makes you feel good. And lastly, let's go to Japan. <laughs> Music, not for everybody, but this is a cool record on Light of the Attic that came out earlier this year. Pacific Breeze. We're coming in now from Japan, Japanese City Pop, AOR and Boogie, 1976 to 1986. So it's Japanese pop, soul, disco. Uh, maybe too disco for some people, too upbeat, but it's a really cool collection. Double record, nice, uh, nice design, nice photography, really beautiful. Here's, uh, I don't know any of these artists, some of you may if you take a look at that. So, that's the trip around the world here, uh, Edwin. Congratulations on 500 subscribers. International, great music. So, Ry Cooter and his uh, international uh, collaborations. Ireland, and then uh, five other countries. Thanks, VC, and uh, thanks, Edwin. I'll put a link to his channel if you're not familiar with him. Take care. Mazzy loves you.